What's up everybody? This Indigenous Realist the Realist right here. I have a short and quick straight to the point uh message on masonry, on Christianity, on the Baphomet, how he links into Pan, how that links into Kemet and Pan-Africanism. I'm Indigenous the Realist the Realist. Please enjoy the video. Please subscribe, hit that bell button and thumb up that video, man. I'm risking my life for this information. In 1832, the U.S. Congress commissioned sculptor Horatio Greenoff to create a statue of George Washington on the occasion of the centennial of the first president's birthday installed in Capitol Rotunda after its completion. Greenoff envisioned the statue to be a symbolic representation of Washington as a great exemplar of liberty. But we all know, in fact, he's actually comparing him to the Baphomet. The Baphomet is a deity or demon or symbicon which originated in the 14th century as a supposed figure of worship by the Knights Templar. But we all know that's not true, and that was just persecution of the Templar for their great works. In those accounts, Baphomet was described as an inscribed head or human skull. The name Baphomet originally was a deformation of the name Muhammad. The prophet of Islam claims that the Templars were worshipping Baphomet meant, in fact, that they were secret Muslims. Medieval European folklore did not recognize that Islam was a monotheistic faith and imagined instead that Muslims prayed and sacrificed to a number of terrifying and ima evil imaginary deities, such as the Baphomet, such as many uh, pagan gods. Some works of art even show Jesus depicted as holding his arms in a likewise manner with the same symbol tree behind him of, indeed, the Baphomet. And I wonder how this happened and why they don't talk about this in so-called churches. We must take a brief look at the Freemasonry background of the founding father of the so-called United States government, which is George Washington. Freemasonry played a role in George Washington's life from the age of 20 when he first became an entered apprentice in the Fredericksburg Lodge until the day he died when a brother in his Alexandria Lodge was one of the three doctors at his bedside. I bet you didn't know that. See, the roots of Freemasonry lie right here in America, but people don't know that. But Freemasonry was made for and by free white men. And free white men is only a term used here in America, a.k.a. the U.S. But I must also state Washington is actually not an English word. It's actually a word that derives from two separate words in Arabic, which was Wa and Shaitan. Wa being the and Shaitan meaning the devil. And not just a, a mystical devil as far as a jinn or a bliss, but the actual devil because shaitan means thing of clay. Shaitan is a derivative of two words, shay and tan. Also take a look at so-called Uncle Sam and notice that Sam is also a word in Arabic for the devil, Samael or the Sam. And also look at his resemblance to the Baphomet. No comprehensive work looking into Freemasonry and the origins of the Baphomet could be called such without first looking at Pazuzu. The demon first appeared in early Babylonian myth in the guise of the storm bird Zu, who stole the tablets of destiny from the dragoness Tiamat. In the later Babylonian civilization, he once again appeared, this time under the name of Pazuzu, and was said to be the child of Chief Wind Demon Hampa, who is in all actual fact Lucifer himself, the fallen angel. When Pazuzu is summoned by worshippers, he appears in a stat statuesque form frozen in the position described as having his left hand down but his right hand raised up in likewise manner. However, he metamorphoses out of the statue form to his living form. In this form, he is fully capable of movement. He is none other than Pan, who is the god of the Wiccans, whose modern founder was a plagiarist and studier of Elisa Crowley. But modern Wiccans are just a resurgence of the ancient witches in their paganistic ways. The origin of Pan, Pazuzu, and even the Baphomet are really unknown, but we can see how they resurge and repopulate the uh, occult systems all through the years. And we even have uh, them being represented by the Indian god Shiva and many other Indian gods. See, this is an old time religion for them. And also, 
Also, we must take a closer look at the ties between Islam, Christianity, and even India itself, along with the Americas, because they all tie in together. See, this brings us to Alistair Crowley, born Edward Alexander Crowley on October 12, 1875. He is primarily known for his occult writings and teachings. See, Alistair Crowley was born in 1875. He known for his occult writings and teachings. See, Alistair Crowley was the father of the so-called Church of Satan, and they considered him the actual Satan in the person, but we'll talk about that later. Besides his interest in occult, he was sexually promiscuous with both genders and was vocally defiant against Christianity and Victorian and post-Victorian prudence towards sexual subjects and objects, and he was also a known drug addict. Crowley studied a number of different religious and magical belief systems, including Buddhism, Yoga, Kabbalah, and Hermeticism, as well as Judeo Christian magical systems. Even though he outright rejected Christianity and published multiple anti Semitic statements, as was a common outlook at this time. For example, he claimed to sacrifice 150 children a year, referring in fact to ejaculations, so he says that had not resulted in pregnancy. But if you look at his life and works, he was actually really sacrificing those children. He is also referred to himself as the beast, referencing the creature mentioned in Revelations, as well as representing himself with the number 666. Then we have the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. He described Crowley as a good friend, although there's no evidence that the two ever actually met in public. They did have an associate in common, Jack Parsons, and all three were members of the OTO. See, just because someone doesn't meet somebody in person doesn't mean that they're not lodge members together. And that's why they can speak of them as a good friend or a good associate or a good brother. But moving on, Gerald Gardner, the founder of Wicca, who we all know says the god of Wicca, of the witches, is the Baphomet was certainly influenced by Crowley's writings, going so far as to sometimes plagiarize Crowley's words and even rituals. Before going on, I must state that a brief look at these old postage stamps will show and prove that Freemasonry has a lot to do with the countries that are in the North, South, and Central America, and also has a lot to do with so-called India, which the Red Indians who took the payout to live in their little uh, reservations and get paid by their no tax free casinos are from. The original, yes I said it, the Red Indian is from India. And that's what people mean by Mongoloid or therefore Asian. People always get it mistook in that Columbus and the other explorers were mistook in about who they met over here. No, they came over here to meet their, their brothers from India. They knew exactly who the people were, and that's why Indian isn't a proper term for our people. It actually applies to the people of India who walked over here around 10 to 20,000 years ago. People will argue that Mongoloid has something to do with a certain group of people, but it doesn't. Mongoloids was uh, what Europeans referred to Asians as, period, Asian on a whole. Freemasonry is the only thing hiding the relation between these two these two people and exactly what happened. And now since I brought up Freemasonry, let's take an in-depth look at Freemasonry. See, Freemasonry is highly misunderstood. Freemasonry is actually an organization built for the sole purpose of serving free white men for free white men by free white men. It was created also for the sole purpose of putting their foot on so-called blacks neck. I say this to mean that the conquest of America and the enslavement of the indigenous people were the sole purpose of Freemasonry. According to the teachings of the third Masonic degree, the Master Mason degree, there was a mystical word which was only known to three people. The, these were King Solomon, Hiram, King of Tyre. Hiram in the Bible is a reflection of the fictional Masonic character called Hiram Abiff. But in all actuality, Hiram Abiff is actually symbology for the so-called black man, which is the indigenous man of America. And that's who exactly Hiram Abiff is. The only true Master Mason. These three appointed 15 craftsmen from among those working on rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem to preside over the rest of the workers. The English working of the lecture explains 15 fellow crafts of that superior class.
class appointed to preside over the rest, finding that the work was nearly completed and that they were not in possession of the secrets of the master's degree, which is the third, they conspired together to obtain them by any means necessary. At the moment of carrying out their conspiracy into execution, 12 of the 15 recanted. The three remaining plotters, not to be confused with the three who knew the mystical word, continued undeated. The degree records how they confronted Hiram Abiff in the temple and demanded of our Grand Master the secrets of a Master Mason, declaring to him that his death would be the consequence of a refusal. The degree continues, Hiram Abiff, true to his obligation, replied that those secrets were known only to three and could only be made known by consent of all of them. One of the scheming craftsmen struck Hiram with a violent blow full in the middle of the forehead, whereupon he sucked lifeless at the foot of the murderer. The strike was a symbolical strike to the third eye. See, this story is indeed the same story of George Washington chopping down a Masonic cherry tree which was the flag of us flown over the Americas. But that's a topic for another day. Hybrid Rebiff is something that's not like to be talked about inside Freemasonry because they're under oath and obligation and they can't reveal that the secret of Freemasonry is actually about the subjugation of black people, so-called black people who are in, in all actuality not even known to man as their term. But to those in the know and those of the ancient line of masonry in his right and exact form will indeed always remember Hiram Abiff for who he really is. If you read books by uh, modern mason, Manly P. Hall, he exposes the fact how masonry is indeed tied deeply into the whole comedic science or the whole comedic theory. And that's why these brothers are repping that commit so hard because they're part of the Freemasonry agenda to keep us down and to keep us from knowing who we really are. Check out these ancient representations of DNA as I explain exactly where DNA came from and exactly what DNA is for and what purpose it has. DNA is commonly defined as a self-replicating material pres present in nearly all living organisms as the main constituent of chromosomes. It is the carrier of genetic information, so they say, deoxyribonucleic acid which is composed of three words when you break down the etymology. D, which denotes reduction. Oxy, which denotes sharpness. And rebose is a sugar of the pink toast class. When combined, it, it is literally translated to be the reduction of the purity of the genes, which brings back into the book of Genesis, which talks about a rib being took, taken away from Adam to make Eve. Maybe the God of the Bible really is Yakub. AKA the big headed scientist said to have genetically modified the original man to create European or the Caucasus. I don't know. That's not for me to design. For those people considering taking the DNA test to trace their ancestry and for those also also propagating the usage of DNA tests, I must state that we should not do this just on the strength that you don't even know the true origins of the word DNA or the true origins of the purpose of DNA, which we see is actually weakening of the genetic. I must state that before I go, dudes propagating DNA wouldn't know DNA if it hit them right in the face because it's right inside of their commission symbol tree and their commission belief system. If they didn't know, now they do. I know you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, hit that bell button so you can get notifications when I go on my live streams. We will be back in session with continuous builds tonight and every night after that for four to five to six hours. I'm a dizziness realist to realist and I'm gone. See, man, I'm indigenous the realest, man. And shit, I'm the motherfucking realest, man. I'ma talk about shit them other dudes can't talk about. Cause I'm not under oath for them, bro, obligation. Conery, 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 Conery. 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 I step in the room full of cones, I let the chopper go.
slamming coons left to right. I'm playing domino. These niggas will come for a chain. I will not come for a thing. To me, the shit ain't a game. I put my life on the line. I'm not like the rest of these vibes. Worshiping pagan idol gods. Scamming my community. I'll come and shoot at you too. I'll come and destroy all the foolery. Snatch that onk off your jewelry.